Stainless steel polishing is different than aluminum in that stainless steel, when you polish this, you're actually making a molecular change in the metal. Aluminum polishing, you're cleaning the metal. So that way you can bring out the shine. With stainless, stainless is made up of certain components of metal. Iron, chromium, and nickel being the three main ones with some carbon in there. So as you're polishing stainless, contrary to popular belief, you do need some heat for stainless steel. I get questions all the time from guys all over the country, all over the world, asking me about stainless because of what we do in the entertainer bus industry and back home in Nashville. Uh, we do a lot of stainless. So stainless, being it's, that it's a molecular change, you have to heat it up to stretch the molecules. As the stainless cools down, your heavier molecules are gonna rest on the bottom, your lighter ones are gonna come to the top of the surface to bring you that shine. So that's the biggest difference in stainless. You do actually need heat. No, to answer another question that I get all the time, if you're doing the right process on stainless steel, you cannot turn this air breather blue. You cannot warp it. Even if you're gonna run 6,000 RPM, if you do the right process, there's no chance of you damaging this, this part on this truck. Even if you're doing uh, a thinner stainless uh, visor, do the right process, you're gonna come out just fine on your stainless steel polishing. So, but along with that, there's a different pattern that we use for stainless polishing. With aluminum, <clears throat> aluminum will push over and then we'll move our buff up and pull back over, okay? We'll lay down that compound line, which is the black line. That's another question that uh, we get a lot is what is the black line? The black line is actually, you want the black line. That's a compound line. So with aluminum, you'll make a compound line here. You'll move up an eighth of an inch, make another compound line, so on and so forth. You're pushing that compound up. Stainless, on the other hand, requires a little bit different technique. So with stainless, we're gonna push over, then we're gonna run our black compound line. Underneath that black compound line will be a grease line. So we're gonna come underneath our compound line and we're gonna buff off that grease line. Then we're gonna move up a little bit further above our compound line, lay another compound line, come below and do and buff off our grease line. It's a rectangular pattern. So that's gonna allow the proper amount of heat transfer. Heat rises, that's physics. So that's gonna allow the proper heat transfer as you're moving upwards in the part. So now with a breather, I'm not gonna go vertical, I'm gonna go horizontal around the breather. So when judging your stainless steel parts, you gotta kinda look like which way are your lines gonna go? Which way do you want your lines to go? This part wraps around like this. So you really want a horizontal style line. You don't want a vertical line. That's, that's just not gonna look good. So we're gonna use the red buff and we're gonna use the yellow deluxe uh, compound to clean up some of this wind burn and blend it in to the nicer areas of this breather. This is a good trick to use, a good compound and a good buff setup to use for the everyday guy, the everyday truck driver that just wants to throw a little bit of shine on his, on his stainless breather and he doesn't want to sand it. Yes, it's wind burnt, but it's not horrible. I believe the Yellow Deluxe is gonna cut that out without a problem. One thing that's important to know about polishing stainless, even polishing your aluminum, is the art of the back cut. Now you guys just saw me do this one whole section of this breather. You saw how I started out. I loaded up my buff and I pulled down and back cut. So what back cutting is gonna do, back cutting, there's two main functions of back cutting. Number one, it spreads your compound down. So that way you're gonna get a nice even coating of compound on this part. So that way you don't have to load up as much when you go to do your next cut going upwards. Two, the back cut allows that metal to go ahead and heat up. It allows the metal to stretch, the pores to stretch. So it's gonna take the compound, your next pass, a lot easier and a lot quicker. So back cutting is, is more of an advanced technique, but it's actually something that can be you know, done very easily. You can actually back cut, and you don't have to back cut real fine. When you're back cutting, just back cut this way and then drop down, back cut some more. You're just trying to spread your compound around. So that way you don't have to reload your bar onto your buff near as much. On stainless, back cutting is actually pretty important because up here is cold. 
down here, that's nice and warm. So this is gonna polish out a lot easier now that I've back cut.